Welcome students to Chem is Try. Today we'll be talking about electrochemistry. Electrochemistry. Now there are several ways of defining electrochemistry. But in simple terms, electrochemistry is the branch of chemistry that deals with the relationship between electricity and chemical reactions. The relationship between electricity and chemical reactions. Trust me, they are related. Electricity, we know, is the movement of electrons or the flow of electrons. And remember, the flow of electrons occurs in a process we've talked about. You remember that? Redox reactions. Redox reactions. Electrons move from one substance to another. So there's a movement of electrons. Eh? So it means the movement of electrons can create what we call electricity. And that is what we want to talk about. There are two ways of relating electricity to chemical reactions. The first way, some chemical reactions on their own involve the movement of electrons. Hence, those reactions will end up producing electricity. So here, the reaction itself is going to create our electricity for us. Or, there's a second way. Sometimes, uh, there is no reaction. There is no movement of electrons whatsoever. But we would want to cause a chemical reaction to happen. And how do we do that? We do that by passing electricity through our substance. So in the second way, electricity can be used to cause a chemical reaction to happen. This means the chemical reaction involved over here didn't want to happen. No but we wanted it to happen so we did that by passing electricity through it now I'm going to talk about each of them first let's talk about how chemical reactions produce electricity let's talk about galvanic or voltaic cell a galvanic or voltage cell is a device that generates electricity by means of a spontaneous chemical reaction. The key word over here is spontaneous. So we don't have to force the chemical reaction to happen. No, it's a chemical reaction that is happening on its own, but it ends up generating electricity. And an example is a battery. The battery we put in our torch lights, the batteries we put in our phones are a classical example of a galvanic or voltaic cell. We will talk deep about these galvanic or voltaic cells and we will have a look at what really happens in there. But before we get into that, let's talk about some basic terminologies we need to understand. The first one is electrode. Now, an electrode is a metal strip that is partly immersed in a solution of its ions. It's a metal. And we place that metal in a solution. But that solution should contain ions of that metal. So if it is a zinc metal, if a small piece of zinc metal, you place it in maybe zinc chloride or zinc sulfate solution. So the solution we are placing inside contains the ions of that metal. An electrolyte is the liquid in which the electrode is placed. So let's try and understand these things from this diagram. So let's take for example, we have this beaker. We put a solution inside this beaker. That solution is called an electrolyte. Now, an electrolyte is, is, is an ionic solution. You place an ionic compound in a solution, then it breaks into ions, and the ions start moving through the solution. And the movement of the ions conducts electricity. 
That is what an electrolyte is. So, for instance, if this is our metal M, the strip of our metal M is what we call our electrode. Then we place it in a solution which contains ions from the metal M. So we see M N plus. Now the thing we need to know here is whenever you see a charge atom, which is called ion, remember it normally dissolves in an aqueous solution, or sometimes it is in the molten, or we've melted that liquid. Sorry, that metal. So it is in the molten state or in an aqueous solution. So whenever you see ions, remember, they are now either aqueous or liquid. Now when you place this metal in this solution of its own ions, these ions move around in the solution, thereby conducting electricity. Now, there are three things that could happen. This ion could hit this metal strip and get away. Nothing happens to it. Or it will strike this metal strip, which is called our electrode, then gain electrons from the electrode. Or this metal ion, or sorry, this metal strip called our electrode could also have one of its atoms losing electron or electrons and also becoming charged, positively charged. When that happens, it also joins the electrolyte solution. So three things could happen over here. One, our cation or our charged particle, our ion, could hit the metal strip, which is called our electrode, and experience no change and move around. Or two, it could strike this metal strip and gain electrons from the metal strip. Now, when it gains the electron, it's a positively charged ion. When it gains electron, it becomes a neutral atom. That means it will have to join the metal. It will have to join the metal. Or, portion of this metal could lose electrons. And when it loses electrons, it becomes positively charged. That means it is no more a metal again, it is a metal ion. And what did we say about metal ions? They are either aqueous in solution or they are liquid, still in solution. These are the things we need to know. Now, the next thing we learn is anode. It's a new term. It is the site of oxidation. So, in a galvanic cell, it's a redox reaction that is going to occur over there. And in a redox reaction, we have reduction and oxidation occurring at the same time. So, where the oxidation is going to occur, we are going to give it a different name. That is called the anode. Where the reduction will occur is what we are also going to call cathode. So oxidation at the anode, reduction at the cathode. I hope you remember this. Now there's a way we can remember this with ease. Anode, oxidation, so an ox. Reduction Red Cat An ox And red cat An ox We know an ox is an animal, right? So an ox is anode Oxidation Then red cat Reduction Cathode I hope you remember this We've talked about an electrode being a metal strip which is partly immersed in a solution of its ions and we are saying that solution where we are going to place our metal strip we call that one the electrolyte and it contains ions so the ions will help it to conduct electricity then over here we are going to describe oxidation using a word where 
oxidation occurs, you are going to describe that one using a word, and that word you are going to use is anode. And where reduction occurs, we are going to also call that part the cathode. And to remember it, we are always saying an ox and red cat is the way to go. We've also talked about what could happen when a, an electrode is placed in an electrolyte. We said three things could happen. The ions from the electrolyte could hit the electrode and nothing happens to it. It will move around on consent. Nothing happened. Or two, this cation could strike this electrode and gain electrons from the electrode. Now, when the cation gains electron, it ceases to become cation at this time. It now becomes a neutral atom. And when it forms a neutral atom, it will clench to the electrode because the electrode is made of the same substance. <laughs> Then we said the electron itself could also lose electrons. When it loses electrons, it will become a cation. That means it will have to leave its position as a solid metal and join the electrolyte in either a liquid or in solution.